Hey everyone, it's Matt Carl at Leroy Heritage Museum, and this time I'm actually at the museum on Mill Street in the basement of what used to be the Open Hand Grange, and uh, thought I would take some time and, and come down here and talk about some of the work we've done in the past. Back when we did this work, technology wasn't quite so up to date and it wasn't so easy to, to do this, and I know a lot of people have um, found out about us and visited us um, in the years since we've been open, but don't realize what we did to get it to the point where it is now. So today I'm going to talk about the basement, and that is because a lot of the work we did had to start with the basement in this building. Uh, sometimes we're asked, you know, how, how are you going to complete that hotel building uh, because it's such a massive project. Well, in reality, this building here was uh, even more of a massive project if you compare what had to be done. In this building uh, we had a completely rotten floor. Um, most of the beams that the building sat on were completely dry rotted. The building was sagging in the middle. There was mold all over the place. There were 2,000 bats in the attic. Um, it was a nasty place. Uh, by the time that we had gotten here. And so uh, we had to do a lot of work on the building and it started with tearing out all of the floor joists, all of the floor in the whole entire first floor. I'm not sure how many people that newly uh, visit the museum today realize that the entire first floor was torn out of this building. So I'm sitting here in the basement so if you look up you can see all of the floor joists that were put in and then tug and, tug and groove southern yellow pine subfloor which is about uh, over an inch, inch and, a th inch and a half thick maybe and all of these floor joists were custom cut um, to match the originals and so they are as strong as the originals would have uh, been when they were first put in and we also uh, put them very close together. I believe they were uh, 10 or 12 inches on center almost, and rather than the normal. So it provided a lot of strength to the new floor. We knew we were gonna be displaying a lot of things in the museum, and some of them very heavy, and so we wanted to have uh, uh, enough uh, support for whatever we put up there. And um, so this project started with tearing out the entire floor. I'm going to insert some pictures here to show kind of what we found in the basement when we first got here in 2001, which was um, uh, a lot of beams that had, had rotted away, um, mold on those beams, uh, a lot of dampness down here. And then this entire basement was completely filled with rotted wood um, that had been stored down here for years by the Grange, um, I assume from projects and so on. And uh, the problem is, is that the basement flooded several times over the years, and then that wood floated around down here and it was basically in a big pile and it looked like a pile of rubble and it all was entirely rotting. So one of the first volunteer projects we did down here was to uh, hand shovel out all of the rotten wood and get out all of the rotten beams and uh, lumber down here in the basement, which was a massive project to do and uh, we finally got it out of here though. We got all of the rotten, um, or the moldy wood, I should say, at least out, or at least what we could do at that particular time. But some of the wood that was rotten and moldy were actual original beams that were holding up the floor. And so we couldn't do a lot of uh, tearing out of things at that point in time. But then, uh, when we got grant funding and, and we were able to move forward on this part of the, on this phase of the project, um, 
we started down here. And so when the contractors came in here, which was back in around 2004 uh, is when this was done, um, the first thing that was done was the hardwood floor upstairs was all torn up. The subfloor was then torn up, which was original to the building, and then all the original floor joists were original. I remember when we first started looking at this building and we first had an architect and first had contractors down in here looking at what was in existence when we first started, that one of the things that was done was uh, uh, an engineer who came with the architect on one of the visits took a screwdriver and decided to determine which floor joists were in good shape and which weren't. So uh, the way to do that was that he jammed a screwdriver into each floor joist to see if it would go into the wood or not. And I believe almost every floor joist throughout the whole first floor, you could jam a screwdriver through it. And yet uh, the Grange was having dinners in here up until just a few years before the uh, building was closed down. So it was probably dangerous at that time and certainly dangerous by the time we got to it. Right above where I'm standing in fact, or sitting in fact, uh, was the kitchen for the Grange and right up above me, right up in here, um, there was a stove sitting there in the kitchen one of those old hot point brand stoves and uh, we went to move it to get it out of the way and I stepped behind the stove to uh, try to uh, push it out away from the wall and stepped right through a hole and my leg went right through the floor right here um, that was interesting to say the least but once we got the stove out of there we found a, a big rotted hole in the floor right there and that wasn't the only place it was bad, but that was one of the worst places. So, once we got uh, all of the wood floor joists out of here, uh, this looked like a giant basketball court because you could uh, stand here in the corner on, in the basement where I'm sitting right now and look right up to the ceiling of the first floor. And uh, that's how we... Um, started out and so if you walked in the door from the outside it dropped clear into the basement for a while until the floor was rebuilt well the way this building was built was there was a wooden uh, large wooden beam that went down the middle and you can see it in this picture I'll try to point to it right up here is where a steel beam is now and a wooden beam went down the middle of this building and it rested on that stone column that is right there. That stone column doesn't carry any weight anymore, but we left it there just uh, for interest because that was how the building was supported originally. Now, the beam that went down the middle was not the original beam that was in here at the uh, when it, the building was first built. Um, Red and Dean Holcomb had come in and replaced that beam at some point in time and uh, we were able to find uh, an actual date for that in the Grange Minutes. But uh, even that replaced beam was entirely rotted by the time we got here in 2001. And uh, most of it comes from the fact that the windows were never left open down here in the basement. And so there was no ventilation. Um, of course, no dehumidifiers or anything like we use today. To keep things dry so it was always very damp down here and uh, <clears throat> there was not a concrete floor it was all dirt and then um, we had had uh, flooding in here uh, in the years previous to this so it had uh, made it pretty bad down here so one of the first things they did after they got the floor out then is to place a small track hoe down into the basement through the double front doors of the building so that uh, they could make it a little bit easier and be able to dig out the basement, level out the dirt um, 
and then come in with stone and lay up what they needed to do for forms for where the concrete or the new steel columns were going to be put in the middle of the building. Um, and then they took it back out and then they poured a concrete floor down here which is uh, six inches and uh, with a vapor barrier underneath stone under that and that made a huge difference in the moisture down here um, but also in um, keeping things dry when the water does come in uh, the side walls um, so we left an area along the edge of the wall as a drain which all runs around to a sump pump in the corner of the building and then pumps out into a pipe that runs all the way down to a ditch. It um, made a big difference in keeping water out of, of the basement here. So they got the concrete in and the next thing they did was to come in and bring in large uh, steel beams and columns and so over to each side of, that's the stone column, to each side of that there's a uh, steel column here and then there's one over there. And then the beam up above uh, runs the full length of the building and supports the floor here. Of course then they came in with the floor joists, put those in, put the subfloor in, and uh, when the steel was put in up above on the um, first floor, they put uh, steel columns that continue up through there and support another steel beam that runs the length of the building up on that level as well. So a lot of work to have saved this building um, just to get it structurally back to a point where it could be used um, that was a major undertaking in itself. Um, that is why I say that this this building was so much more work than the current hotel building. Current hotel building doesn't have the kind of structural problems that this building here had. And we were asked a lot of, of times, even when we were doing the Grange building here, if, it, if the building's in that worse of uh, in that bad of condition, why wouldn't you just tear it down and start over again? Of course, anyone who has um, worked on a project like this, who has applied for grant funding, knows that you can't apply for grant funding to build new buildings. It's just not the way it works. Any grant funding that is available out there uh, is always to restore old buildings and to uh, put back something that was there, not to build new. So you can't build new unless you raise the money outright, Not um, certainly not through the grant funding. And it took a lot of grant funding in addition to the donations we received to be able to do this building because of all of the structural work that had to be done. And um, nevertheless, we got through it after, after um, many years. But this was the first project um, in 2004, finished in 2005, I think, was to get this uh, floor underway. Now, since we're almost on the level of the creek, here, we couldn't go down any deeper with the basement, which is what I originally wanted to do because it's difficult to walk around down here. It is um, about five feet from the concrete floor to the bottom of the floor joist. And so for most normal people who are over five feet, it is um, difficult to walk around and do anything down here to move anything around. I can't tell you how many times we've hit our head down here trying to do things. But uh, when we did this at that time, of course, this was the only property we had. It was just the only place we had uh, to store leftover things. Uh, now, we've never stored anything down here that was of any real importance as far as history material goes. Um, the only thing that's been stored down here are salvaged building materials. Um, which have some of which have been used in the museum um, building later on or uh, been reused in exhibits as well and so 
that is the type of thing we we have down here for the most part we also had a little workshop down here but again it was so difficult to work down here because of the low ceiling that we stopped using it so the things that you see for, um, in the picture in the video here are things that have been salvaged over the years from local buildings windows um, pieces of display cases um, antique glass doors antique cupboard doors um, tables um, that need work on them or new tops or something um, that's mostly what you'll find down here and our goal is to move all of this out of here um, and determine what's uh, important once the hotel is done and uh, we have a place to put it that's a little easier to get to so that there won't be uh, anything down here at all is the goal eventually right now of course everything is uh, still in place now another thing why I'm down here is to talk about the heating cooling system which I'm standing next to and this is much like the system up at the hotel that we put in which is an air-to-air -air heat pump system so we're looking at the main unit here beside me and then the outdoor unit is right through the stone wall back here behind the building and then of course the ductwork runs through everywhere and it heat, heats and cools the first floor and the second floor both and in this case this system uses electric for backup heat so uh, we always have to uh, make sure that it's not necessarily unnecessarily I should say running in the winter time um, because it'll use up electricity pretty quick but other than that um, since we didn't have a fuel source here already that was being used like we did at the hotel um, the electric was seemed to be the best option so it works very well it heats and cools the building and we've been very happy with it over the time that we've been here so this is 2018 um, almost 2019 uh, we started on this building in 2001 uh, is when we first purchased the building and then uh, started to work on it and opened in 2010 but anyway this gives you an idea of all of the work that was done in the basement to uh, get this to the, the point where it could be used as a museum of course this was the first project we did the structural work was the first project we did but there were many other things to be done after this and when we re when we finished this part of it we went to the outside and then did uh, exterior work and um, we're following much the same pattern at the hotel right now when we first got that building we took care of um, anything that needed to be torn out demolition wise or um, things that had to be repaired electrical or heating or cooling wise or plumbing wise we're taking care of all of those things and that was done first and now we're getting ready to do a big project on the outside of the building to do uh, work that needs to be done to take care of code issues and to take care of um, any deterioration on the outside that needs to be attended to so um, the difference is that on this building here uh, we were not able to get to the outside of the building until around 2006 which was about five years into the project um, at the other building we're getting to the outside of the building in three years of, of having it so um, things are moving a little bit quicker because we didn't have to do the kind of work that was required down here in this place of course all of the electrical was completely redone in this building as well all through here and um, so this this building was essentially brand new again when we started over uh, and when we opened because we had to take out so much but again um, that is how you're able to get grant funding to do it is you have to you have to go that route and uh, do things 
those ways in order to get what's needed to finish the project. So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, some of the background here and uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about what we did here. Of course we did a whole lot more than this which I'll talk about in other videos but um, just showing you some of the stone walls here. So thank you again for joining me and see you next time.